Thanks for tuning into the Texas Scratch King channel. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share this video. In this video, Frank Rocca speaks about myths behind some of our most famous dogs. Let us begin. Mr. Frank Rocca begins with, You know, maybe nothing is for sure, but for my good friend Tommy. As I have mentioned, he had some world famous dogs, including the dam and maternal grand dam of the immortal champion Honeybunch Rom. Shires and Carver's Amber. And Shires and Trahan's Beauty T. As what has happened many other times. Another breeder gets his name on any dog he ever touches that as well. Then history is recorded while time devours truth. His photos and exploits appeared throughout Pete Sparks Sporting Magazine. Of mid-20th century fame called Your Friend and Mine. Just which folded in the mid-1960s and was reintroduced in the mid-1990s by one of my peers. Terry Williams. Of the famous Southwest Smith & Walton's Grand Champion Badger Camp with Badger's fourth match only lasting 004. And also had his brother Champion Fox and their sire Ruben Rom. The above is the same B. Smith who had the five-time winner Champion Bad Billy and many more notable Bulldogs. In the early 1990s Tommy became afflicted with a severe asthmatic condition. Which led to more serious problems affecting his heart. He was faced with changing a comfortable lifestyle that offered much reward in many ways. But he broke all the, rules, anyway and somehow still managed to see old age. I suppose Tommy had figured he could live for a short while. Facing a proposal of a miserably unfulfilled life. And then still die from something else hiding around the next corner from just being a ill or old man. Instead, he opted to enjoy his life in somewhat of a hedonistic fashion. Which partly explains why we got along well. He related some interesting stories to me during our many telephone conversations. And these tales unraveling some mysteries concerning the roots of the modern American, pit, bull terrier we think we know today. Tommy explained to me why the, honey bunch, strain neither looks or performs. Or behaves like what we see in most of the other typically famous, bullison, stock like Lopose's Buster Rom and Davis's Midnight Cowboy etc. I have been around long enough to have seen dog come down the old Boudreaux family by way of the likes of Walling's Bullison. Clayton's Eli Jr. Davis's Midnight Cowboy. Jack Carver's Night Train, Jordan's Sassy, etc. And I did see some exceptions to what were regarded as the rules concerning a contrast on either end of some spectrum considered absolute. When the only reality is within itself, ourselves, and them, a natural succession from choice, action, reaction cause and effect, with more choices as a result. Typically, dogs of the 1970s down from Boudreaux's Eli were from above average to large size. Mostly black in color. Usually aggressive in manner and generally wielded plenty of mouth. Also during that period in the 1970s they had the reputation of being known as the, top dogs. Meaning they would appear game providing they could remain ahead and on top. But reputedly would not stay in the heat of the action for very long if they were put way behind or deadlocked in a marathon which was never an easy task. Again, such as categorizing and did not hold true for all. And the same can be said for all the high ability strains. I stress this point because Floyd Boudreau and his son Guy are personal friends of mine who are men deserving of their respect. Two of the few, good guys, that remaining. For my money. Whatever Mr. Boudreau tells me about game dogs I will believe. But I will go on later to relate some amusing stories hovering over these rugged bulldogs. That came up out of the swamps hence. Selectivity utilized through the hands of scientific. As well as instinctive breeders who preceded many of us in the modern bulldog world realized a transformation of a few hard-mouthed destroyers into a high percentage of pit game individuals with normal to above average ability. With many showing the gameness we all look for in a game-bred dog. By today's standards as opposed with what we had to examine 20-odd years ago. The, Eli, strain has become one of the top competition strains in the world. What were once thought to be a typical game bullison dog are no longer a rarity. Partly accredited to the infusion of other lineages. And especially because of discriminative breeding still being practiced by some of our top dogmen. Including Mr. Floyd Boudreaux Modern Vision. For example the Maverick Dogs. Plus the respected lineage down from John Chavars and Lopose's Buster Rom. Which some say was a cold dog and others claim he won one match. Rumor had it back in the 1970s that Carver registered 26 dogs. From the two litters of Bullison by Art's Missy Pups from which Bobby Hall shows a photo of owner Art Riley. Holding the only six pups from the first breeding in his first book Bullison and His Sons. Walsworth Press Inc. 1986. A few of the offspring that I could find on pedigrees. Meaning more than likely dogs that matured into adults worth breeding or Lopose's, Shavar's Buster Rom. Raymond Holt's two-time winner Jeremiah. 
D. Hudson's dead game two-time winner Tex. And the Kemmer's great stud Macho. Perry's white Missy. Hyde's spade. Carver's bell. Carver's black Missy. Carver's Nossen. Boudreaux Pushrod and Ramsey's champion Artie. All I personally know of these dogs mentioned is that they were probably good dogs that apparently were worth using in successful breeding programs. Because they in fact were as their offspring would gladly show. At this point I will add a sworn statement from an unnamed but highly respected dogman in the game dog world regarding the mystique of the Eli dogs. One who is still very much alive. The true sire of Eli Jr. and Bullison, according to another reliable source who an old timer, was a large black dog Maurice Carver had owned and called Colonel whose breeding was unknown to the general fraternity. That even the reputable Mr. Boudreaux had not heard of this story until years later. Another famous dogman insists to this day that Eli was bred by Don Mayfield from the Langham's Little Cotton to Evelyn Start's Cry Baby Litter and that Eli and another from that breeding were sold to Sonny Sykes. Still another old time, highly respected breeder of the Curvino strain tells an amusing story of how the real sire of Eli Jr. and Bullison was a black Great Dane which he says explains the transformation from small size and average ability dogs that were inbred on Boudreaux, Blind Billy, to the huge, aggressive, hard-biting, black animals we saw in the 1970s. Eli won two at 37 pounds, not counting the time frame during which he was stolen, and the foundation dog of that line. Blind Billy was a light yellow buckskin. Eli's sons were nearly twice his size. And man aggressive and black in color. Which of course means next to nothing. Eli Jr. won two at 51 pounds and his tightly bred belly brother Bullison was advertised as the best 50 to 54 pound dog in the world. Which probably added to the doubt of their pedigree by some. I wish I could have bred to that so-called Great Dane. Because for my money it could not matter less what the sire was. Providing he can produce American game dogs like those two brothers. Then also another tremendously respected breeder. Was another who is still among us. Claims that the infamous brothers were really sired by Eli but that they still had another black, hard-biting, aggressive one-half-brother from a litter sire during the time period when the old Eli dog was stolen and used as stud in the southern United States. And one later to be known as grand champion Zebo Rom, Lonzo's Andy by Lonzo's Angie. And he was a tremendous dog that was sold by Lonzo to the old mountain man without papers. The above is a story of friends of the late. Great Mr. Bob Wallace of the old family Reds of the Leitner strain say he went to his grave believing that story about Zebo being a Boudreaux bred dog be to true. The Andy by Angie Litter had a red male named Adams Tush. And a red bitches named Brewers Rosie and Lonzo's Lena. And with Zebo's most famous brother a red red nosed two-time winner called Brewers Vindicator. Strangely enough, although Zebo was used as a stud countless times to bitches of nearly every variation of pigmentation under the sun including to red red-nosed bitches cherry bomb for one, to produce a great litter of black dogs. Yet to my knowledge he never sired anything but black dogs. Although black dogs came through his sire Lonzo's Andy like Greenwood's Oki. Later the Eli and Zebo blood was mixed with some important dogs like Clemens Toby. Clemens Z. Boudreaux, Huey, and one of the all-time aces in McGee's Panther. Although I do find it interesting that such controversy surrounding this strain. But regardless. All the fuss could probably be accredited to the stigma this bloodline established from just one litter of only four pups. To the two males being Eli Jr. and Bullison. With two bitches. Lady and Brendy one of the sisters. And there's no doubt Clemens Brendy made her mark as a producer. Even though she lost while in the hands of the very capable dogman in Dave Adams. Adams claimed that the reason she lost is because she was conditioned in Ohio. And then was brought way up to the thin air of the southern mountains and could not breath well. The inbreeding of Brendy to her brother Eli Jr. produced the sire of Crenshaw's champion Rascal Rom. Which also had his pedigree refuted by a man named Harris in an article printed in the Sporting Dog Journal in the 1980s. Named Carver's Black Shine. And. Litter mates Raymond and Sharon Holt's Junkyard. Cummings Eli III and Clemens Soso and also a washed out looking black and tan type bitch I saw rolled in a barn immediately after grand champion Art's seventh over the dead game Cumpers puller named Ginger while owned by Adams. In October of 1980 I bred Cherry Bomb to the proven ace Zebo, not really caring how he was bred. But instead interested in his own outstanding abilities showing himself to be a king amongst princes. As of the mid-1980s. I too put my own bloodlines with the Eli stock through Bullison and his brother Eli Jr. for the mouth and intensity these dogs were known for. But as a whole. Most of my current dogs carry a good bit of the supposedly unrelated Carver bred Honeybunch blood. If most of that last sentence sounds very absurd. And a little interesting and a lot confusing. And quite possible and relative to circumstances in your own yard. 
Please read on. Please keep in mind what we already know for sure. And that is rumors are merely that. Many will disagree with the following. Some could not care less. And I cannot attest to any of this as being proof positive. But most of what unravels at the very least seems quite likely and may make for a good read on a gray day. According to the records kept by one of the most proficient, prolific and personable breeders of APBT that history has offered to us so far. Mr. Maurice Carver. His records shows champion Honeybunch Rom is being sired by Wallings Carver's Halls Bullison X Carver's Shire's Amber. With Amber being out of Carver's Trahan's Shire's Beauty T. Tommy Shire phoned me a few months before his death to tell me what he swore to be the truth. He considered me a friend. And a reasonably honest dogman. And respected my endeavors at appearing fairly versed. He also knew of my hunger for knowledge and quest for the truth. In that light of comradeship and understanding. Tommy pointed out a few bits of information that he made me swear I would not reveal until after he was gone. He felt that what he knew to be the truth should be revealed. But understandably he did not want to deal with the possible repercussions from people. Who, practically speaking, could not pose a genuine argument due to them not being involved in APBT back then. Or even born yet. But would try to argue anyhow. Following a statement meant to be enlightening. Not insulting. He aimed to set some of the records straight for those of us who are historians and truth seekers. We who admire the gameness of a breed more than exploits embellished by any controversial dog's breeder, owner, handler. Or is it about half? First, I will stress the point that whatever the genetic makeup is of a dog used generations ago. After a few more generations of selective breeding, it becomes a matter of what is at hand that really counts. Mr. Shire assured me that the real sire of Honeybunch was Carver's champion Iron Head four-time winner. He insisted that he was present when the breeding was made and later saw the litter nursing of Amber while on Carver's yard. His guess at the main reason the papers were modified, if they were, was due to the fact that Eli dogs were a hot commodity at that time because of the biting power of Eli Jr. and Bullison. Meaning the Bullison pups would sell faster and command a higher price in a highly competitive market of trends and fads because of the unusually hard mouth with the Eli dogs of that time. But mostly, many of the top breeders executed their respective breeding programs through secrecy. Most not wanting their competition to know their recipe. While some others merely like to trick people for one reason or the next and would rather lie where the truth would fit better. Tommy also stated that the real sire of Davis's grand champion Boomerang Rom was also the mysterious Carver's champion Iron Head. Mr. Boudreau was also quoted in an interview. Which states that Carver admitted to his friends that champion Iron Head was the true sire of Boomerang. According to the paperwork, some of Boomerang's littermates were Willie Brown's champion Nell. Petronelli's Fox two-time winner and Arts Missy. Another great dog of Davis's coming from Carver was Champion Chivo that was shown in early pedigrees as being bred by Hunter. Then later he appeared in pedigrees written by Carver as being a son of Bullison. At this point I should interject an excerpt from a conversation between Mr. Davis and I regarding his grand champion Boomerang. I phoned down south in the mid-1970s to breed my cherry bomb to Boomerang. I had explained to Mr. Davis that I could not find a tight lightener male to line breed her to and expressed my interest in loosely line breeding to the Trahan's rascal blood in Boomerang through his sire Carver's pistol. His answer was, son, you're welcome to breed to old Boomer but pistol is not really his sire and since I didn't breed the dog I can't change his papers. But he is a real grand champion and a good producer. The unique pigmentation mask found on some of the Boomerang strains indicates a possible close relation to the mongrel appearance of Iron Head which was one that looked much more like a mixed breed than either Eli Jr. or Bullison. Honeybunch dogs also generally are buckskin with a black tail or ring in the center. Black hairs peppered throughout the neck and ears and a black or faded mask. Tommy asked me why Maurice Carver had a funeral monument built in Ironhead's honor. Yet the dog did not appear frequently on the pedigrees of brood dogs he and his associates were winning with. Now that would be a fair question. And also keeping in mind other secret Carver pedigrees which were revealed by his wife Pat after Maurice's death. One prime example that comes to mind is when a man that is known for his honesty and integrity Norman Houghton revealed the true pedigree of the sire of Wood Snooty Rom and other good dogs registered from Houghton Snake. Carver showed Snake as being from Iron Head by Miss Spike. But Mr. Houghton did correctly by showing the original pedigree. As he knew it from the parents of his own snake dog as being Houghton's champion butcher boy Carver's one eye. In Hooten's first match he used Butcher Boy to smash Kennedy's Booger Red in 036. Champion Butcher Boy won his fourth in 125 at 57 pounds and was bred by Frank Fitzwater who was said to be a son of the notorious Missouri outlaw Jesse James. Now, 
obviously both pedigrees are made up of sound carver dogs and each would have spawned marketable puppy sales. But the thing of it is that Carver freely admitted that he would sell a man a good dog but not the recipe. Besides being one of the most highly respected individuals in the game and nationally feared as a competitor and as a breeder and yes. Obviously the most liked dogman of his time. I also admire Mr. Carver for still managing to be a topic of conversation all these years after his death. And even though most people agree that Carver did play with papers. His blood is still the highest regarded and widely acclaimed of any other. I may not agree with some of his methods. But my hat goes up to him as being a respected man amongst real men. I almost feel guilty writing these things.